So we have Dr. Borden here with us today. He helped to develop the first um, prostate class, prostate surgery class here at Wesley Long, and we just have some frequently asked questions to ask him today. So thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Um, so these are these are questions related to um, prior to surgery. So will patients have a special diet or bowel prep before surgery? Yeah. So typically, your surgeon will recommend a light bowel prep before surgery, usually the day before they'll have you on a liquid diet and we'll recommend a light laxative and then typically the hospital will ask that you avoid anything to eat or drink after mid or before or at midnight the night before your surgery. Do patients have any other appointments before surgery? Yes, yeah, so most patients will typically have a few appointments after they see their surgeon in preparation for their operation. They'll typically see a physical therapist who specializes in helping them get their urinary control um, there's usually an appointment with the pre-op anesthesia clinic as well. So there are a couple of other appointments to prepare men and get them ready for their surgery. Okay. Um, does this procedure requ require general anesthesia? Yes, yeah, so it does require general anesthetic. When we do this surgery these days, it's typically done with what we call robotic surgery or laparoscopic surgery, and that does require men to be put totally to sleep with a general anesthetic. And is it any part of the urethra cut out during surgery? Yeah, so the urethra does run directly through the prostate like a core through an apple. So when we remove the prostate, we do remove a small section of the urethra. Um, the bladder, which is a very mobile organ, then we bring down to the urethra. So I know some men are concerned that they'll have penile shortening and we're not necessarily pulling the penis back into the body or anything, but that small section of the urethra is removed at the time of surgery. And where do patients, spouses, or significant others wait during surgery? Yeah, so typically, um, as soon as a man goes back for their surgery, their family will be directed to the family waiting area, and that's where the surgeon will come out and talk to the family as soon as the procedure is over. Okay. What is a catheter made of? So most catheters are typically made of latex. Um, for those patients that do have latex allergies, we do have alternatives to latex if necessary, but it's usually a very um, soft and pliable substance. And what will the catheter feel like when a patient wakes up? Yeah, so most men will complain of an urge to urinate when they wake up. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes this is very mild, sometimes it's more severe. If there is a, enough discomfort, then we do have medication that we can provide patients to help them. Okay, and how long is a hospital stay? Typically, men are in the hospital overnight. They can usually go home the next day. Um, except in rare instances, depending on their medical condition, et cetera. But for most men, they'll be able to go home the day after surgery. Is there a prescription for pain medicine at discharge? Yeah, so typically your surgeon will provide a prescription for pain medication. Most men are on prescription pain medication no more than a, a day or two typically and then can move on to some Tylenol products. Um, that will be provided to patients upon discharge and your surgeon will go over that with you. Are there other prescriptions given at discharge? So typically we recommend that patients take a stool softener which they can obtain over the counter um, and then it's not a bad idea um, usually to give patients an antibiotic around the time the catheter is removed just to prevent a urinary tract infection. So typically you'll get that prescription upon discharge as well. And what if a patient has an allergy to pain medication? Yeah, you know, we certainly will be asking patients multiple times during the process of coming in for surgery if they do have any allergies and we certainly can use alternative medications if necessary. Okay. What should patients do the first week at home after surgery? So typically we recommend the patients are uh, ambulatory. We recommend that they're up walking about every hour. That's important to prevent blood clots in the legs. Um, so we do want patients being active to a degree. However, we don't want patients doing more strenuous activities, lifting more than 10 or 15 pounds, straining strenuous exercise during that period of time. Okay. And how long does a catheter stay in? Catheter is usually in for approximately one week. That can vary a little bit, but usually about one week is typical. And when do I get, when does a patient get their pathology results? So usually the pathology results are also back within about a week. So usually your surgeon will have those results when you come back to get your catheter out at your post-operative appointment. How long do patients need to wear the white TED hose for? Yeah, so usually the, the, the most important part of wearing the TED hose is while they're in the hospital and they're not extremely active. Again, this is to help prevent blood clots in the legs. As men are up and around, the TED hose are not quite as necessary. And so some men, if they, f they feel like that provides them some comfort, they can continue wearing them at home, but they're not absolutely necessary at that point as long as men are up walking about every hour. Okay. 
And when can a patient resume a regular diet? So your surgeon will give you individual instructions and that can vary from surgeon to surgeon as far as what they recommend. Generally speaking, we recommend that men um, ease into their diet, almost like they're getting over a stomach bug. And so we usually start out with some liquid diet and then have them progress on to um, some solid foods. But picking things over the first week that tend to agree with you is usually the best course of action. Okay. And when can the patients go back to work? Um, again, that depends on what men do for work. For men who are engaged in more physically uh, strenuous activities at work, usually they may need to wait a full six weeks before they can uh, get back to doing all activities at work. For other folks who are um, have more desk jobs or jobs that might not require such physical straining, um, they can usually return within a couple to a few weeks, um, understanding certain restrictions as far as lifting and straining go. Okay. And when can they start driving again? Usually I tell men about two weeks is appropriate. We just want men to be off their pain medication and then feeling as safe beyond the wheel of a car as they normally would. So if somebody were to cut them off, could they make a quick turn or a quick stop? And as long as they feel they can do that as safely as they could before surgery, they can resume driving at that point. Okay. But about two weeks is typical. Okay. And when can they have sex again? Usually most men can resume sexual activity as soon as they want once the catheter is out. Again, usually most men are not going to have very good erectile function immediately after surgery, um, so it's perfectly appropriate. In fact, we, we recommend frequent attempts, um, but we do want men to have appropriate expectations, which we provide them in preparation for surgery. Okay. And how is prostate cancer monitored after surgery? Yeah, so typically we'll be monitoring a man's PSA, the blood test that usually helps us find these cancers in the first place. When the prostate's removed from the body, the PSA should typically become uh, undetectable. It should basically be zero within a few months from their operation. And then we continue to monitor that, and that becomes really a perfect tumor marker for us for monitoring prostate cancer. Okay. When do men regain continence after surgery? So urinary control is obviously one of the other um, important things that we work on after surgery. Uh, for most men, that process is approximately three to four months. Certainly some men can see that recover earlier, some men can take longer, um, but on average it's about a three to four month process. There certainly are some men who even long term may continue to deal with some incontinence. Um, that's a smaller percentage of men and rarely men may require additional surgery. But again, for most men it's going to be about a three to four month gradual process and working with their physical therapists to get back their urinary control. And when will men regain sexual function and will their sexual function get back to 100%? Right, so I think a lot of sexual function is preparing men for, um, or having appropriate expectations anyways, and that depends on many factors. Um, so there are individual factors, a man's preoperative function, age, um, how advanced their cancer may be, and what can be done at the time of surgery to help preserve some of the nerves around the prostate that help control erectile function. So certainly that can vary from person to person. It's rarer that men will resume 100% um, normal function just like before surgery, although that can happen and that's always our goal. Um, more reasonably, most men who have good function up front will be able to have erections again eventually after surgery and that process can sometimes take up to two or three years. However, with medication or um, sometimes other treatments that we have, most men will have the option to resume sexual activity um, and have erectile function. It just depends on what we need to do to get there. Okay. We'd like to thank you for joining us today. And again, if you have any questions or anything, you can contact us at 336-832-0314. Just remember that we're not there every day, so it might be a couple days before we, we return the call. Or you can reach us at prostateclass at conehealth.com.